Hello everybody. Welcome back to part 8 of the Mystery of the Bevel Blocks. If you have not already, please watch the previous episodes as we are building on concepts brought up in those episodes. Today we are going to look at a lot of aqueducts and we are hopefully going to end in a pretty famous site and a kind of a shocking site, um, an Italian site. But uh, let's try to get going here quickly today guys. Uh, we've got a lot of these to look at so first Facelis, Turkey. Now looks a lot like the other aqueduct we saw in Turkey. This is clearly a bevel block construction with the similar cornices again. Now in some instances I think I might be seeing mortar. It may be repair mortar other areas I'm not so sure they may just be the margins of the bevels up here this clearly looks like mortar definitely you know repaired at least in the upper elements but these appear to be original blocks this just appears to be a rebuilt structure from the ruins of the older structure we can see square holes I'm not sure how detailed some of these are but I think we can make out some square hole anomalies, some odd bevels with weird margins. Uh, most of the, you know, most of these are irregular in size. Even some of the upper elements might have anomalous holes in them. But definitely uh, a similar style and execution to the other Turkish aqueduct. I I believe this might be the original top and then obviously this rubble above is the addition for the repair yeah so we're gonna see a lot of these aqueducts that have a, a similar feel to them and after you see a couple you're gonna start noticing them everywhere see right away now this one Moria Lesbos Greece or Lesbos Greece however you want to pronounce it this one is an important example to note. We'll see a couple pictures here. But clearly bevel blocks and they extend into the upper structure. This entire structure appears to be original. You can tell that they are irregular. There are like band courses, uh, border courses, uh, even, and they are also irregular. And these appear to almost have like a molded appearance, the way they kind of contour to the other surfaces so that's really interesting again foliage so maybe square holes underneath the foliage but we see other instances of small square holes maybe that's a square indentation so yeah this one is a really well preserved one and we're gonna look at a repair job they've done here now at first glance you'd say okay wait a minute those look like bevel blocks but we look closer and you can see they're obviously a lighter color they are all pretty even and and the same size the bevels are the same across all the blocks this is a modern version of a bevel block this um, um, when they executed these this was probably done with saws uh, you know hard diamond tip saws or maybe they did the final execution with chisels and hammers but it, you can tell it's close but it's not quite the same as the ancient blocks it's a different execution however however they were doing it is not the way we did the repair the the margins are different the 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 protruding bevels are different it, it, it's a it's a well done job you know good good job to the restorers there that's that's pretty faithful and loyal but it's not quite what the original structure was and I like at the top you can see some brick elements this was the top course this was probably a you know probably an addition there may have there may have been something up here in the past but whenever I see bricks and, and fill I always think that's that's a later addition. So this is a really good example of a faithful repair job. 
And here, see, side by side. Look at the old versus the new. We'll zoom in on this one. And you can see other new elements. Now, on the old, this, I'm going to say more than likely, is a new repair. Because it matches the color and the style of these over here. So this whole arch was still together minus that piece, which is pretty impressive to me. And they just said, okay, we need to, you know, repair that. We'll put that there. We'll maybe put this stone in here. And then we'll repair this. You know, some of these may be reclaimed blocks, but I'm, I'm saying all these on the perimeter here are new blocks that they have fashioned to look like the old blocks. The fact that they're all even like this and uniform versus the old ones are very irregular. You know, the, the margins are different. The, the amount that the protruding parts stick out is different. Even the pitted surfaces are different, but it's a really good it's a really good job. But you, it, it's a it's a subtle difference. And up here, all these elements, these they've done in the same style as the originals, right? But it's not quite the same. And perhaps you see anomalies in the uh, old stones, like square holes, uh, lower portions. Perhaps, I'm not sure what's going on there. But there are things going on. Maybe there and there. So, yeah. Multiple hallmarks. Uh -huh. Now, the Aqua Claudia in Rome. I guess this one's a pretty famous one. And this one is a pretty chunky, you know, hefty, impressive example. And they appear at first glance just to be roughly hewn stones thrown together. But you start looking closer and you start seeing the anomalies, the square holes. These are actually bevels. It's hard to find good pictures of this. But I'm going to say that this entire lower structure, up, maybe up even into these upper elements, is original. You can see brick repairs here brick repairs along the top or additions and then over here this whole area here has been added these bricks and perhaps farther down as well but this is a very large site look at the people compared to the aqueduct and we're not going to discredit the Romans for what they could do but some of this stuff is just like it's almost why do all that for just for some water you could do many different executions and that's just a lot of extra work uh here yeah here's another portion yeah you can see the bricks have been put in to stabilize maybe the structure to add different features maybe gates right but this thing was pretty solid it, it held together for a long time before these additions were added and i think you can yeah well, this is a pretty good detailed picture so you can see square anomalies peppered throughout the structure they're not really in a uniform distribution they're kind of all over the place square here square here you know even down here where the color is different this is interesting right what would be causing the color difference from here to here but then this area is still pretty well preserved that's interesting to me but then again square holes or at least eroded holes and the bases see now we're starting to see a lot of them and that's similar to some of these other sites we see that they they i, I want to say outgassing it's it sounds crazy but it seems like these lower areas where these holes are they're more prevalent first of all and they seem to be more eroded but sometimes the entire structures have them and they're eroded so we're going to see some interesting examples of those later square hole there and perhaps here you know, you can see the old cornice where it used to be, but it's just eroded to nothing. There's so maybe some square anomalies in there. Yeah, there's a few hallmarks here, a few different ones. I even loaded us a couple more photos today of some pretty interesting sites that I found. Um, matter of fact, listening to a Dan Carlin podcast, uh, his Kings of Kings episode uh, reminded me of... Uh, couple of sites I hadn't looked up and if you want to check those out they're at the top of the page and they also have some of these eroded square holes that I, I just really can't explain so here's a good portion of it 
you can see the scope of this thing and you know it's perhaps hollow elements yes right it has a, a lower like an inner portion this was covered just really impressive this huge thing for water and see yeah more holes square holes here they're more prevalent in the lower areas very very impressive right okay next Byblos Lebanon and Yusuf Aryan is going to show us that these are in fact bevel blocks huge bevel blocks these are some of the biggest ones this here this is on the scope of Baalbek and the fortress of Nimrod and these appear almost to be like coral or you know conglomerate rock you see the eroded holes you know I'm assuming these are square holes that just are really eroded the bevels they're you know at, at first glance it looks like mortar but you can clearly see them on the side this is a pretty impressive wall and Byblos one of the oldest sites oldest Greek sites and yeah the base is even strange look at that 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 looks like concrete to me the whole thing looks like concrete or at least you know cut out sedimentary rock you could see the striations here the layers you know if this is this is probably just all cut out of bedrock somewhere close by maybe this I don't even know if this is part of the base or if this is a separate like I say conglomerate that's in between the stones and the ground that's who knows right that this is really impressive and you can see more in the background right I love this picture this this is really impressive these are huge and, and yeah you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to plane the surfaces because uh, that would you know obviously yeah take take time but look look how big they are that getting that up there is going to take some time and some effort and they're already pretty pretty flat I'd say these are you know these were dressed pretty well for what they are this piece probably had more to it before it broke away right so this was pretty pretty flat this is really impressive to me I, I really like that example and there's perhaps more at Byblos uh, yeah here there's a really good example yeah I didn't get too many pictures of this place but there is a lot more going on here clearly bevel blocks all this grass right all this foliage you we, we know right now that this is these are square holes that's not just a coincidence anymore these are all this grass there's a reason they're growing there we know now and we can see perhaps nubs square holes and indentations the, their, each row is irregular, each block irregular. The margins are sometimes irregular. Uh, they look they look pretty good in this scenario. They're they're pretty straight, and each one is pretty even. But each block is just a completely different block. And again, person for scale. And I like these upper elements too. Look at this, square holes, definitely on purpose, right? These are on purpose. And they have a bevel around the whole thing. These the, these are those upper uh, cornice elements that I was talking about at the beginning of the series that I was that we were going to start seeing that were really you know just weird. And yeah, these these are like a throwback to the Portugal example, and they even kind of throw back to the Baalbek example. But what a strange configuration. These like we see square holes in in certain areas, and they don't look very uh, deliberate they they just look haphazard but these are almost you know they're they're just uh, enshrined or almost they're they're uh, presented to you they're they're uh, they're celebrated there you go you you could say that the they celebrated these square holes and they they meant to show them off and present them because you know each each one has its own little bevel so this wasn't just the lifting point right at this point it's this is an artistic motif at this point and you know we could speculate if there was a cornice attached to it maybe because of their spacing and you know the row but I find this example 
you know, really interesting because, you know, most of these square hole examples are just, they, they could be explained away as, as a construction, you know, necessity. But here they're, they're, they're celebrated and they're presented and showcased as like an artistic element. So it's like they're both along with the, the way the arches and everything else we saw. There's not much uh, figurative decoration or anything like that, or at least that we, we've been able to identify, but it seems like the architecture was celebrated and the, uh, the motifs and, and styles of construction were the art. And this is interesting too, this little water spout. Is that one big block that's been carved? Find that interesting. So yeah, there's more going on at Biblos if you want to research, but definitely a connected site and some really impressive things going on there. Aha, here we go. Where do you think we are now? First, you can clearly see these are bevel blocks and these are really finely dressed. Very, I mean, that you could call these uniform. I mean, this, this looks pretty straight and these blocks look pretty similar in size and dimension we are at Pompeii now this was a pretty shocking sight for me when I found it I couldn't believe it I was like well, what does this mean what does it mean that they're at Pompeii uh, so obviously this these are older than the eruption of the volcano and they've they were the home of a culture perhaps before the culture that was wiped out by the eruption. Now, you can see all these old, old column fragments. They're all fluted, which is interesting. You know, that we know that the fluted design is a Greek hallmark, but is it? I'm not sure. These are really, these, these are really well done blocks. Perhaps even, is that a polygonal element, or does that just where a bevel the margin changes? That's strange, it, that, little, that it ends a good two or three inches before the end of the block. That's interesting to me. It's just really well executed. And then all the rubble, extra, it, I'm not, it's, it's strange because it's right up against the blocks. So is, was this just the only portion of this site? that had a structure that was bevel block and all the rest of this was a later addition that can't be ruled out uh, especially this wall here that's just single blocks this might even have been a reclaimed re-erected piece and perhaps there was a wall going along the back that we don't see or that has fallen down and then carted off and used for other areas these stones in the front are pretty interesting to me they're just they're ancient looking stones and the the curb looks really interesting to me it's it really old looking obviously but I'm not sure those might just be scratches but they could be like grooves in the stone processing marks I'm not sure they have a little mitered edge to them that's probably just from age and you know and, and use and wear but who knows these these elements they could be portions of the original structure that were just either reused or perhaps these are the original configuration it's interesting to think about you see these older foundations of these arches perhaps these upper structures were built on top of the older elements but there may be going there may be a lot more going on at Pompeii uh, but I didn't really look further after I saw this picture, I, I just found it, put it in, categorized it, moved on. But there, I mean, there, there may be more over on this left side. There may be arches at, at Pompeii. There may be more elements that are still underground and covered up. So who knows about Pompeii as far as uh, the extent of the original site, but there's definitely elements that, are, that have the connected hallmarks. And this execution is you know it the it very formal we'll say this this uh this uh regular uniform pattern is very formal and that style is seen at the alexander the great tomb so 
there's there's only a few examples that we've seen so far where they're so formal. You know, also at the Acropolis, you know, the, the, it seems some sites it was a, a, a more a, a general construction style, which we see irregularity and, and, and high bevels and quirky bevels and lots of square holes. And then in the more formal examples, we see you know very few square holes or they're very purposeful. And you know margins are always very uniform and similar. Rows are very similar. Blocks are very similar. So I, there, I think the, uh, the importance of the sites were dictated by the uniformity of the blocks. So the cruder the construction, the cruder the blocks could be. And perhaps that's why some of these forts are so crude because of the crude nature of what they were doing. And perhaps the very formal, nicely executed buildings were buildings of dwelling and government and you know civilization. So. After this, we're going to get into some gates, guys. Uh, we'll probably save that for the next episode because it's more of a tangent from what we've been looking at, and it really deserves its own episode uh, to go over the motifs and, and why they're important. We jump around the, the globe, so it's going to need its own episode by itself. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to label it as a bevel block episode. Uh, I might even do like Dan Carlin does and just call it an addendum or like an add-on for a bevel block episode. But we'll uh, we'll close it up here today, guys. We've seen a lot of interesting things. Um, those aqueducts call into question a lot of history and a lot of sites like we've seen. You know, they extend all the way into France. So, and I think we're going to see more in the Middle East coming up soon. So, a lot of th lot, lot of things to think about, um, but. So far, I've, I've been I've been pretty faithful to the hallmarks, and I don't think I've found any yet other than that one in Jersey City, New Jersey, that appears to be bogus. All these other ones appear to be original structures that I believe were con constructed very, very long ago. We're going to say thousands of years ago, and perhaps, you know, contemporarily, all around the same time period by a culture that predates our historical uh, traditional notion of, of civilization of when it started uh, this the Sumerians Babylonians um, the Thracians and the, the Medes and the, the Persians uh, I'll probably have to hop back on Dan Carlin's uh, podcast after this and listen to some more of uh, the traditional Orthodox history and get get a little more uh, well read on on that subject because we're going to call into question a lot more uh, Middle Eastern sites and it, I think I need to brush up on my uh, my history a little bit so I can better present them and give you guys a better well-rounded view of what my hypothesis is so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me this morning and uh, we'll talk to you next time bye